Hello, welcome. Hi, everyone. Welcome in. This is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and this is part of a weekly live series that I do usually on Fridays. Today we are on Monday, and we are going to be looking at the Abundant Beauty Masks, and specifically we are going to make this card together. So if you have found me live, it should be Monday, August 14th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And I know this isn't my usual live day because usually I am live on uh, Fridays. But if you were here last Friday, you saw that the issues. <laughs> I ended up having a problem with my modem, our modem. So yeah, I'll tell you that story in a minute. But the good news is we got a new modem. And so I am crossing my fingers. Please cross your fingers. And let's hope that the signal stays strong. Let's hope that everything looks great today. And let's hope that we get through this amazing uh, demonstration because I can't wait to show you how to use the masks, not only to make a, a great sunflower image, but look, you can just use any color you want. It doesn't have to be a sunflower. So we're going to go over that. As you're joining live, can you just drop me a comment? Let me know if you have used blending brushes before or not. I just am kind of curious if I should go over some basics or if I, uh, you know, if I have, if everybody kind of has used them. Um, whatever. I'm just curious to see. So leave me a comment as you're joining. If you're watching a replay, feel free to skip ahead about one minute because I always log in a moment early to check on comments and to make sure that the lighting looks good. And then we will get started with the actual demonstration and the stamping. So let's see. Okay, so I, it looks like, I'm looking at the comments here, it looks like maybe it's split almost half and half that people have and have not used the blending brushes. So you know what? Um, as we go forward here today, I will give some tips on using them and tell you a little more about them and how I like to use them to achieve some really nice, soft, blended effects. So yeah, I'll be happy to do that. Awesome. So hey, let me just say hi to a few people who are joining in live. Carol and Tian, Michael, Robin, Karen, Terry, Donna, Marcy, Mary Ellen, Stacy, Robin, Samara, Mary. Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. I am so happy that you are here. Thank you for spending some time with me. I appreciate that. Hi, Tammy and Julie. Shaylee has used them. Okay. Lois has used them. Awesome. Polly has used them. Fabulous. Alrighty. So let's get started. Thank you again for joining me. My name is Patty Bennett. I blog at pattystamps.com. I've been blogging there since 2006. I have been a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! since 1995. So I just, I think what's funny about that is that I was looking back on some of my files and I noticed how many times we've had different sunflowers, like they come and go, they they have been stamps, they have been dyes, now we have a stencil, or they call it a mask, I call it a stencil, <laughs> and it's fun to th see things evolve over the years. I did want to show you that for inspiration for creating my sunflowers, I used to stop by this amazing sunflower field on my way to and from picking up our son at school. He went to private school. It was quite a ways away. It was about a 40, uh, 35, 40 minute drive each way. And there was this amazing sunflower field. And so I would stop there in the fall and take pictures. These are a couple of cards I had made with my uh, photos from that field. And what it sort of reminded me to do as I was trying to recreate with these masks, my blending brushes and my ink, was a reminder how the sun filters through the tips of each petal. Do you see how they're much lighter? And then as it goes towards the center, 
It tends to be darker from the shadows. And the center can actually be very, very, very dark. It can also be lighter. Um, it just depends on the sunflower, the seeds. I think the state that the seeds are in as they start to like pop open, they become lighter and then it changes colors a little bit. So all of that to say that really there's no right and wrong, but if you want to use nature as your inspiration, I think it will kind of help to help you with the shading. So you can see how I've gone a little darker towards the center, lighter towards the outside, and a darker center. And again, it's art. You can do whatever you'd like, but using inspiration is never a bad thing from nature. So the masks are in the new holiday catalog, page 47 and page 77, Abundant Beauty. Here's the number, 162331. And in the set, you're going to find four pieces that actually make the sunflower. You have the flower, two pieces for the center, and a piece for the leaves. So we're going to create with that today. Also in the set, I, and I think this is just such an amazing value, you have a piece that will make a leaf background. Here is a card that I used. Actually, all these same four colors but I just made it into a fall card. So that is also in the set. There is also this, well, I was gonna say sunflower, you know, my brain. I think I'm hungry, should have eaten. <laughs> Snowflakes would be the proper name, and I think I showed you this before. I just really quickly used one color on, uh, I think this is Coastal Cabana background with Lost Lagoon ink. Just really simple. So that's also in the set. And then also in the set is this houndstooth background. And you can see that I've used it around the perimeter of this card that we're going to make today. So look at the value in this set. Four masks to create the sunflower, plus the leaves, plus the snowflakes, plus the houndstooth, all in this kit. I can't show you the inside of the catalog, but I can remind you that this is what the catalog cover looks like. It starts September 6th, 2023 for customers. It's live to demonstrators now. If you are one of my customers, I have over 400 of these in the back of my car, which are going to the post office this afternoon when we are done with this and after I eat a little bit of lunch because <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> So I'm excited to send these out to my customers. If you're not already a customer, if you haven't been ordering regularly from me, you can go to pattystamps.com for the request a catalog button. You can also add front slash catalog to this and it will take you right to the form. If you don't already work with a demonstrator, you can request one from me. And I will send you one. If you already work with another demonstrator, please ask them for your copy because these catalogs cost each demonstrator money to purchase them. And of course, we have to pay to mail them. So it's quite an investment every year to send our customers all the catalogs. And we appreciate the opportunity to service our own customers if they order from us. So anyway, just got that out of the way. And you may be thinking, well, okay, great. This doesn't start till September 6th, and why are you showing it now? So I just wanted to tell you that this catalog actually starts five weeks later than it did last year. And so I feel like I'm kind of behind the eight ball in sharing projects with you. Plus, I'm going to be gone two Fridays in September on our crafting cruise that I'm co-hosting with Kirsten. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start showing these new products if you are a demonstrator, of course, you're already ordering these on your pre-order. If you're a customer and you want these before September 6th, go ahead and consider signing up as a demonstrator on my nationwide team. I'd love to have you, and then you can order your products early and at a discount. So I just wanted to get all of that out there. <laughs> oh, hi, Carol. She says hot northeastern or eastern North Carolina. Yeah, it's going to be warm here today as well. Hello, everyone who has joined in. I am so glad that you're here. Thank you again for joining me live. I appreciate you. 
So let's do this first. And then I want to show you my tips for blending and making other colored flowers. And they don't necessarily have to be sunflowers. So we will talk about those and make, and make a few of those as well. So these um, sunflowers, I am just going to pull in, this is one of those little grid pads that we had when we sold the Stamparatus. You may still have this. You can use your full-size grid sheet, doesn't matter. You could also just use your um, silicone mat as a background just so you don't get ink anywhere else. Whatever works for you, I'm just going to use this. And what I'm going to show you first is the difference of using just the yellow. This is Daffodil Delight. And then adding in some pumpkin pie to do that shading that we talked about when I showed you the photos. Do you see that difference? I think it's quite a difference. And I really love how it looks when you add in the pumpkin pie. You could also try Cajun Craze or Copper Clay or Calypso Coral, any of those, if you have a different orangey brown. So I want to show you that first, just as a little uh, blending brush lesson. So we have our just basic white cardstock here, and I'm going to start with the mask. And you know, I don't know. I tend to call these stencils. I don't know why the word with Stampin' Up is a mask. So if you hear me call it a mask or you hear me call it a stencil, let's just go with the flow because it's either one, right? Each of these stencils, let's just say, has a little notch. Do you see that notch? Now, it doesn't really matter where you put the notch to start with. It could be any orientation. It could be flipped. You can put it wherever you want. As long as when you are using the other stencils in this set to do the centers and the leaves, if you put this notch in the same orientation, everything will line up easy. It's also pretty easy to line it up without the notch. <laughs> I'll show you that, but just as a tip. I tend to just go ahead and do the upper right corner just because, I don't know. I don't know just because. I don't know why. I don't know why I was going to say that. But I use the upper right corner as my starting point. And I don't even have to adhere the cardstock down because it's tucked completely under. And then I'm just going to use post-it flags. They're these little post-it flag things. I just keep them right here at my desk and I'm just holding down the mask. This could be washi tape. This could be an actual post-it note, whatever, whatever helps you to adhere it down to your surface. And okay. Yeah. Polly likes saying stencils as well. So if you hear me say that it's sorry, it's just, that's what comes out of my mouth usually instead of a mask. So we are going to just use our, um, this is my blending brush that I have labeled for Daffodil Delight. You don't have to have one for every color. If you have one for all of your yellows, one for all of your oranges, one for all your reds, one for your blues, one for your greens, totally fine. You could get away with probably, I don't know, seven or eight total blending brushes. I started that way when Stampin' Up! first started to sell them, and then I decided to just go for it. I have one for every color. I do have a free download if you want the labels. <clears throat> Pardon me, it is on my blog. And I just have one for every color. So this is my Daffodil Delight. And what I'm doing is swirling to get ink on there. And then you always just want to kind of dab off just to make sure there wasn't like a fuzz or a dimensional backing or a big blob of ink. And then I start by placing the brush right here on that center. And then I'm just going to very, very lightly swirl in a circular motion, and I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger going towards the outside of those petals. When you are blending with blending brushes, it is far better to build up ink bit by bit than to try to just 
press down and just get it all inky. So that is what I'm going to do for the yellow. I'm going to repeat that. So starting in the middle, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And as we go towards the outside, it's actually using up the ink. Therefore, it's making the tips of those petals lighter, which is what I want. If you want it all colored in, just keep going, keep going, ink it again and ink it till it's filled in to your satisfaction. I personally like the center a little darker and the tip slider. That's just my personal preference. So that's what we're doing here. So there's our yellow and you could stop there and you will get this sort of a look, just yellow and it totally fine, totally pretty. But like I showed you, I really like this addition of some pumpkin pie. So I'm going to add pumpkin pie. Yes, Evelyn, back in the day, stencil was the word. You are absolutely right. And I am from back in the day, I'll tell you. I started using stencils back in the 80s. Do you remember when they were brass? I remember when they were brass, like showing my age here. <laughs> okay. So, oh yes, shimmer paste would be beautiful with this patty. It would be so pretty. I'm going to have to try that. So now pumpkin pie, this is darker. And so you do want to test it. Make sure that you don't have a big dark blob, right? Okay. And then again, starting right in the middle. Wait, before I do this, I want to tell you one tip. If you're making a lot of these, at this point, pull this up, slip another piece under and keep doing all of your yellow. Because once you add this orange ink, you would need to go back and clean it each time to do your yellow on the next one. So I actually did that. I did a ton of yellow ones, and then I slipped each of them back in to do the orange. The reason is, so I'll show you, once you put down this orange ink, and we're just going to go about maybe halfway on this flower. We're not going all the way to the end. But once you add this orange ink on top of this stencil, if I were to lift this up, put a new piece in, and go back to my Daffodil Delight, my Daffodil brush is going to pick up the orange that's sitting right there, and it's going to get all muddied. So that's why I'm saying that. Hope that makes sense. Let me know if that made sense or if it, if I'm talking gibberish. <laughs> okay, so we're just adding, building up just, just a little bit. And if you have purchased or maybe you already own the smaller blending brushes, this step right here that I just did would actually be really good with the smaller brush because you have really tight control. But it works either way. You can see that I did it with the larger brush and it totally works. So we're going to lift it up and here's our magic. I just love seeing it when it's done. Isn't it pretty? So again, that difference of adding a little bit of the orange. I did pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, Calypso coral, copper clay. Those would all work as well. So do you, I, I just love that. I think that's so pretty. So while we have the orange on here, I'm going to go ahead and slip this one under. You know what? I'm not because I'm going to have to put my head under the camera to line this up. So we'll forego that. I was going to go ahead and do it, but I'm going to set this mask aside. I'll do it later when I don't have to put my head under the camera. <laughs> How's that? So then, I think this is the one we just did. It really doesn't matter because we're going to add the center. So if you put that notch in the upper right and you lay this down, you're going to see that this lines up perfectly for the three centers. Um, like I said, it's pretty easy to line up. You really don't need to worry too much about the notch thing, but it does help you, definitely. For the centers, I used pecan pie. I also tried copper clay. 
I wasn't quite a fan of the copper clay center as much, so we are going to do pecan pie. And with this larger center, this big circle, I did sort of a, a medium-ish amount of ink. And I started in on one side and I let it be lighter towards the other side. I liked the dark to the light. If you want to fill it in really, really solid, absolutely fine. You can totally do that. I just, in the end, one thing I really liked was seeing the contrasts of dark and light. Many of you know that my dad was a watercolor artist and one thing he taught me, even though I couldn't watercolor worth a darn, well, it's because I couldn't do freehand drawing. Let me say that. I couldn't freehand draw anything. I, that's how I should say it. But one thing he taught me in his paintings was that the the contrast, when you look at anything, let's look, just look back at this photo that I showed you. When you look at anything, the contrast of dark and light is really where your eye goes. And it just adds a ton of interest to whatever it is you're looking at. If you just have something that's all dark or all light, your, your eye sort of doesn't know where to go. But when you see that contrast of light and dark, your eye just zooms right in. Here's another one. Dark light. And it's just appealing to the human eye. So I try to do that when I am coloring with my blends. I try to do that when I am using a blending brush. And I try to just be mindful of the darks and the lights. So when we lift that up, isn't that beautiful? Do you see there how you can just really notice the darks and the lights. Isn't it pretty? I I just think that's beautiful. And personally, I actually kind of like this sunflower better this way than with this next step. My personal preference. I like this better than this. But this is part of the set, so I'm going to show you how to use it. And you can decide if what you like. In fact, let's leave this one and let's go back to this and we'll, we'll do one of each so that you can see that. And hopefully I'm not completely boring you to death. If you're watching the replay and you want to skip over this, feel free. <laughs> I just want you to see that difference. And by the way, it might look like it, but I am not pushing on this brush. I am letting the weight of the brush add the color. If you put your finger here and you scrub, you're not going to get this beautiful gradient of color. Okay, you might. I mean, you know, maybe... You have a, a better technique than I do. But I find that when I'm holding it back here and I'm letting the weight of the brush head do the work, it really gives me a lot more control and allows me to do what I want. And in this case, it's the dark to the light. And you do want to clean these between, uh, like when you put them away or if you use a different color. If you're just going to make a whole bunch of the same color, you can set this aside and then you can use it again on your next uh, piece of cardstock with the same color. If you switch colors, clean this off. You can either go to the sink with some soap and water, really water, we'll just take it off, um, or I just use baby wipes and I just wipe it off. I wipe it with a towel to dry it, and then I can reuse it. So we have two that look basically the same, and I'm going to show you this next step. This comes with 
the set. And I used the same color. I experimented at first with two different colors for that center that we just did and this detailed center. And I actually liked it much better with the same color for both. But experiment. Think about what colors you like, what colors you have, and you can just experiment with what you think might look great. It's only paper. You know, if you don't like it, cut out a center and put it on top or um, start over, toss it, you know, up to you. So here we go. Oh, that one probably, let me see if I can line that up. That one probably needs a tiny bit more ink there for definition. I was most likely talking and not paying attention. I think that's lined up, maybe. Little more detail right there. Let's see how that looks. Yep, there we go. So there is the difference. And hang on, I need a baby wipe. I obviously put my hand right into the stencil, obviously. My goodness. Well, hopefully they don't inspect my fingers at the post office. They'll be like, what have you been doing? <laughs> so here's the difference of that detailed fourth mask and not. So you have choices. This one I did with copper clay instead of pecan pie. There's another choice. Uh, this one I added some wild wheat. I didn't actually like it as well. So I went over it again with pecan pie. <laughs> so there's just, there's so many options here. Oh, thank you, Patty. She says, I'm never boring. Well, that is just so super kind of you. So then let's move on to the leaves because that is the fourth mask or stencil. So you can see here we have three different leaves. This is my favorite. I love that leaf. This one is okay. This one bugs me. I'm sorry to say. I think it's odd. I actually do know from taking all those pictures in those sunflower fields that sunflower leaves often just sort of curl over like that. This is not unusual at all. I just personally am not a fan of it. So rather than lining this up with the notch and putting these three leaves, which I, I'm not sure that those make a lot of sense to me where they are. Meh, like, sort of. I am just going to use this leaf, and I am just going to, like, put it there. I'm going to move this mask. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to move it and put it here. You can really do whatever you want with the leaf portion of the mask. So this is Garden Green. And since I am going to just be moving this around, I am just going to hold it. I am not going to adhere it down with the um, little post-it flags. So I'm going to start up here where I think it might be a little darker. And just let it fade a little bit. This is going to kind of give me the look of maybe having more than one color of green but I didn't. I just used one color. So I think I'll do one about here. If you want to blend two greens, totally fine. Doesn't matter at all. You can do that. Absolutely. And I'm going to move it and I'm going to put one here. Again, getting most of the ink off where I want it to be darkest and just letting it travel lightly out towards the tip. See the, the difference there? The dark to the light. 
this is, I like this. I like this leaf. I love this leaf. Let's, just so you can see the difference. What if we put, just trying to, I'm looking at this one to see like if I did two kind of like that. So let's do that. Let's put a couple of those on just for a difference. I'll do another one right here. I'm not even going to re-ink it, so I'm going to get an even lighter image. There. So, there we go. There is the fourth stencil, fourth piece of the flowers. So you could just, at this point, you could just um, use this as a card front. Put a greeting on it. You could be done. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh. I just think these are so, so, so pretty. But what we're going to do, and this is, I was inspired by the sample in the holiday catalog, and I'm pretty sure what they did with it was use the new distressed tile embossing folder. We looked at this during my unboxing video, and I had just done it in, I think I did this copper clay and pebbled path, I think is what I did here. I just had tried it out real quickly, and then I think from looking in the catalog. Now, I know there's a recipe for this. I could have looked it up, and I didn't, but I'm pretty sure in the catalog what they did was they embossed this piece to get this look. Now, before that, though, I am going to die cut this panel with the deckled rectangle, and then I'm going to emboss it. So... Um, talk amongst yourselves. I will just turn around and do this over here at my die cutting station. Maybe as you are talking amongst yourselves, you could let me know if you picked up any tips as I shared the blending brush tips with you. I'm just curious. If anything was helpful, and I'll just show you that if you're going to die cut and emboss, you want to die cut first, because if you emboss it and then you try to die cut it, then you're going to smash down the embossing, so you don't want to do that. And I think I might have cut this with a one size smaller. So we will have two sizes to compare. Sorry if that was loud. Did I? Yep, I did. So that's fine though. This one is die cut one size smaller. So we'll just have two different uh, cards to kind of look at for that. So you know what's interesting is... I'll show you how I did this background, but I was just looking at this thinking uh, that, well, maybe that's a little too much. I was going to say that's really pretty, but that's a little too busy. So never mind. Never mind. <laughs> so that's the new distressed tile embossing folder. And we are going to do the background. This um, hound's tooth does come in the set. If you've been with me since the beginning of this video, you saw that. And I am just going to do a panel. I am actually going to attach it to a folded card. And I just wanted to make sure that I kind of get it where I want it without getting ink like onto the back of the card or anything. So that's why, that's why I'm just going to do a panel and put it onto the folded card. That looks pretty straight. And I did use pecan pie just to bring in the, the centers. 
but you don't need to do the entire front because you just need the perimeter. So starting kind of off the edge and just bringing it into the cardstock area. You can add as little or as much as you want. I actually tried to have some lighter and darker areas. I didn't want it to be completely all dark like a printed designer paper. I wanted it more to feel like, I don't know, maybe it kind of came out of a page in an old book, a little bit worn looking, lights and darks. If that bugs you, you can just keep adding ink until you have it completely even all the way around. So I'm going to just hold, I'm not going to set it down because I don't want ink all over this, but I'm just going to hold it here and make sure, yeah, I think I've got that covered. We almost did the whole thing. <laughs> and then that will go on there. You know what I'm going to do with this one, though? I think I have pecan pie cardstock ready to go. Let me see if I still have a piece over here. Yep, I do. So I am going to make these two cards a tiny bit different. I'm going to take off, let's see, I think... Since this is wider, I know, don't, if my rambling bugs you, I'm, I apologize. I do this all the time. I think it out loud to myself. I try to, I try to rationalize in my own mind. <laughs> so I thought, wouldn't that be pretty? And then I kind of leave some thoughts out and then you're left wondering, what is she talking about? There, that's what I was thinking. I like that. So then we have two sort of different looks. Yeah, good, yes? I think yes, I think pretty. What I wanna show you though is a tip for this. So let's just quickly, pardon my reach, let's put these layers together. Here you can really see that distressed tile isn't that pretty? So when you are adhering an embossed piece to something else, I always recommend using liquid glue because when you press it down, it lets it kind of smush in and go into the raised and depressed areas. And it really, I feel, gives you a really good seal. If you just use a tape runner type adhesive, it doesn't smoosh out and go into all the other little areas. It, it works. I'm just saying I really feel like a liquid glue is perfect for an embossed piece. Look how pretty. Oh, I love it. Look at that. What do you think? I really am liking that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm just catching up over here on comments. Okay, yes. Carol likes the card base in Tammy Does Too in the Pecan Pie. Oh, good. <laughs> work it out loud. Yep, Tian, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm always working it out loud. <laughs> oh, good, Robin. I'm glad you liked the tip. Thank you, Nell. She likes the leaves. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I am loving your comments. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. So what I wanted to show you over here was how I did this double layered. What? What is that shape? Does that have a name? It must have a name. I don't know the name of the shape. What is that? Uh, okay, somebody will know. So there's the larger one and there's the smaller one. Okay, I wanted them layered. 
you can see that they're layered but I wanted the larger one to be with these yellow polka dots from the Brights 6x6 designer paper stack but I didn't want to just die cut it I wanted do you see how the white one has stitching but the designer paper layer does not so I want to show you what I did for that because so I'd never done this well not that I can remember I don't think I've ever done this before and I thought it was really cool so there's my daffodil delight designer paper piece and I am just going to glue this onto the back you're probably already 10 steps ahead of me and you probably already know what I'm doing okay you know what let me close this before I put my hand in this and then using my paper snips I'm just going to cut along the outside and when I flip it over I'm going to have this shape in the right size in polka dots so that's what I did but you could of course just 100% die cut it it would just have those little stitches but see I wanted it oh really man does anybody else ever do that okay please hold let's see if I can get this off I don't know if you all have one of these in your stash I love this thing a sand and pencil eraser this will often take off ink or I don't even know what this was I don't know how this got here Okay, let me see if I can just, I think something was on my little grid sheet. I think that's the problem. Let me see if I can just scrape this off a little bit. Then maybe we can hide it under a leaf or a bow or something. Surgery is what this is. Okay, well, it's better. It's better. Ah. <laughs> anyway, that's how I did that coordinating shape out of the Brights pack. And then I stamped this one and put it on top. That's how I got the two layers. For this flower, I just went back to one of the pieces I had already done. And I used my paper snips to cut out an additional flower and put it on the front. I did the same thing with the leaves. I stamped, excuse me, I didn't stamp. I stenciled two extra leaves and I just tucked them under there. And then this is the black and white ribbon in the current catalog. You know that we reviewed and there are two different widths now of the black and white gingham and one is a little more vanilla. This is the white one. And I just kind of tucked it up under there. So that's how I finished off the card. And I will finish off this one with these parts but I want to get to those other colors because I think it looks like we're kind of running out of time I don't know where the time goes when we are together here but I want to show you please hold where did I put them all mm -hmm. good grief how can they just disappear Please hold, they've got to be here. They couldn't have gone anywhere. Aha. All right. So I wanted to show you some tips for doing other colors with the sunflower portion plus the center, but without making it look like a sunflower. Whew. I thought they were like disappeared, gone, lost and gone forever, Clementine, I don't know, whatever, something. That was scaring me. So what I'm going to do is just clean off the center. We need the center. Just going to wipe it with a baby wipe and then dry it with um, an old rag I have right here. And then the flower part, I'm going to clean off that one. 
with a baby wipe. Dry it off. Truth be told, I dried it off on my jeans before, but there we go. Okay. Then we can do some other colors. Uh, you know, oh wait, is there a way that you can tape off just some of the center so you only get a certain part when you did the hound's tooth? Yeah, of, uh, yes, you could. So the hound's tooth, if this is a great question, who asked this? Samara. Okay, so what I would do if I really just wanted like a, um, a really defined border is I would take, and I know this is a die cut, but whatever you have that's the shape you want, I would stick those together, put this down, and then use my blending brush. Then when you lift this up, you're going to have a perfect framed border instead of how mine sort of uh, blended to the middle. I think that's what you're asking. I think so. Let me know if that answers your question. Oh, great, Fran. Yes, you're welcome to um, you're welcome to watch the replay. Yep, Robin comes right out in the wash. It really wasn't okay. I take that back. I didn't I didn't wipe the ink on my jeans. I wiped it with the baby wipe, but it was wet. So then I just wiped it on my jeans to dry it. So there wasn't any ink. So yeah, just just to clarify. Uh, nested Essentials dies. This one, yes, the one I just showed you, this, that is in Nested Essentials. But it doesn't have to be a die. That could just be a piece of cardstock. Let's see. I'm just looking at any questions. The coffin shape die. I like that, John. Oh, Carol is asking, where are the recipes for demonstrators? So if you go on, of course, log into the demonstrator website. In the, in the center, okay, let's, let's say this is our screen here on the demonstrator website. Right kind of in the center, there's some big pictures that scroll through. You can click on them and you can go see what that's about. Right above that, it, I'm trying to remember exactly what it says. Does it say, oh, shoot. I can't remember what the two things say. There's two things right here. And one of them, you click on the right one. And it brings up a different, I think it's, I forget what it says. You click on the right one and it brings up the catalogs. And right under the picture, right under this picture of the holiday catalog, one of the tabs is um, recipes. That's where you find it. Let's see, was there anything else I missed? Hang on, I'm just going to look back through the comments really quickly. Yes, copy paper scrap, any scrap. Yep, that's what jeans are for. Yes, Nell. <laughs> okay, so let's look at doing a couple of other colors, and I'll just give you a couple of tips. So we have our flower mask. What color should we do? Oh, I know. I'm going to show you this one because I mixed uh, Bubble Bath and Berry Burst, and I want to show you a tip on that. Okay, Bubble Bath, Berry Burst. And by the way, this is a tip. I didn't do this before, but this is a tip I actually learned from Sarah Douglas. She, When she does ink blending, she leaves her ink pad open like this, and she puts the brush like that. And then that way you're not setting it down on your tabletop. You're not risking that it's going to roll off of the pad. And I thought it was brilliant. So I try to remember to do that, but I don't always remember, but it's a great tip. So for this pink one, I started with bubble bath ink and this is a super light ink. So you might have to ink twice or really saturate it on your um, blending brush. Okay, always starting in the center. Well, for this flower, starting in the center, getting larger, 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 and we're going to go all the way to the tips because this ink is so light that even when you get to the tips, it almost looks like there's no ink.
All right, so this is just bubble bath. Now, do you remember when we were doing the yellow one and I said, at this point, I want you to do all your yellows and then come back and do the pumpkin pie centers because you don't want pumpkin pie ink all over your yellow blending brush. Okay, we're going to break that rule. For this, here's what I found. Going straight to your berry burst, and it's dark, so you just want to like make sure you get any blobs off. I am going to leave that bubble bath ink on this plastic, and I'm going to go right in with my berry burst. It's going to help to blend those two colors. I found that when I cleaned off my stencil from the bubble bath and then I added the Berry Burst ink, it just didn't blend. But this way, you are actually picking up bubble bath ink on here from the plastic and you're adding the Berry Burst. And the way that it blends together is just so beautiful. So we're going to lift it up and we're going to peek. I hope it's coming across on the camera because if this is so, so, so pretty in person. All right. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? It's so pretty. It is so gorgeous. I just love this. You could leave white centers even. It's so pretty, so beautiful. But we are going to add the center because I want to give you another tip. Well, it's a repeat of what we were talking about in the beginning about the lights and the darks. So let's get that positioned. Okay. I am going to use, I think, just the Berry Burst ink that's still on here. I am not going to add more Berry Burst ink to this because to achieve this effect where you get some dark fading to light, you don't need much ink. And the whole point of this is the contrast of this dark and this light because that is where your eye is going to go and that is where you're going to say this looks so much more realistic than just scrubbing ink onto cardstock. So without re-inking, let's see how much we have left on here and let's go dark, fade it up to light. You can always add more, so it's always best to do this, lift it up, take a peek, see how you like it, and then you can always add more ink. But once this ink is on there, it's on there. You can't take it off. Just a tiny bit more. I know it's hard to resist not doing it again, <laughs> but... Okay, all right, let's peek, let's peek. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. So just, do you see that, the light and the dark? That is where your eye goes, and to me, that's what I love. That's, that's the key to this for me. And you can do it whatever however you'd like to do it. You can make these flowers look however you want. You could clean this one off, get the pecan off, and you could add that in the center. But I didn't want this to look so much like a sunflower with the seeds. I just wanted it to be a flower. So that, my friends, is a boatload of tips for you 
for creating with the Abundant Beauty masks and doing a sunflower or doing a not sunflower. <laughs> so if you tuned in late, there's the sunflower look. We started this one. I will finish that card soon. But you have all these different possibilities. Right? All these possibilities. And you can do whatever you'd like, whatever combination, whatever you think looks best. And you can make anything you want to make with this uh, flower mask. I just think it's amazing. And then, of course, cutting them out or doing them on a circle die cut, like I had done some on the new deckled rectangle. So there's I think it's the sixth one out from the center is the perfect size for that flower. So you can do them just on a circle. I've done that, but I can't show you because it's for the upcoming cruise that Kirsten and I are hosting. So I can't show you that yet. But isn't it just amazing how all these possibilities are achievable with the inks and the blending brushes and the Abundant Beauty Masks? You are welcome for all the tips, everybody. I'm so glad that you have enjoyed this. Yes, Carol, I have videos with my dad's paintings. I have blog posts with my dad's paintings. Yes, I've shown them quite often. I'm glad you love the combinations and how pretty this is. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, great tip, Polly. Isn't it fun to leave the um, ink pad open. Um, I am going to, while I'm waiting to see if anybody has a question, I do just want to say one more thing about the fact that I have one brush for every color. You, like I said, you do have your choice of, you could have probably get away with about six, seven, or eight brushes. One for reds, one for pinks, one for yellows, greens, blues, purples, and browns. So however many that is. You could do that. The You can also, if you want to, wash these. Okay, the drawback of that is you have to wait for these to dry. And I don't know if you've ever done it, but these can take up to a day to dry. These trap so much water. So if you are wanting to do a project with several colors, you might have to wait till the next day if you're going to wash this to use it with a different color. So that's one drawback of that. The other drawback is if you wash the color out of these, you have to sit and swirl it on your ink pad for so long to build up this much ink. And the beauty of leaving that ink saturated in there is that you barely have to get any ink the next time you use that color, like just a few swirls and you're ready to go. Otherwise, if this were blank or clean or new, you're swirling and swirling and swirling and swirling and swirling and you're just soaking up so much ink. So for those reasons, my personal preference is a brush for every color and leaving them inked. I don't wash them. Now, is that like gospel? Is that right or wrong? Is that the only way to do it? No, you can do whatever you would like. Whatever works for you, whatever is in your budget, whatever fits your craft room, all those things. It's not the only way to do it. But I do get questions, and so I just thought I would like share with you what I do and why. Oh, good question. Lois says, what color green would you use for these that aren't the sunflower? I actually got out a couple of other greens. Should we try one or all, are you all ready to go? Are you tired of this? I can clean off the garden green. And I got some other greens out because I was going to try it. So let's try. So my mind would say go to Parakeet Party for this. So let's try that. Let's see. I think it would be really pretty. That parakeet, that's lime. There's parakeet. And parakeet. Let's try that and see. And what I might do, here I asked if you were all, 
if you wanted me to try it and then I just tried it. I should have really like looked at the comments. I'm thinking to add some granny apple green on top of it. So let's do a couple of these and then let's see if we want to shade a little bit with if we want to shade and add a little bit of granny apple on top because I think that might be really pretty. By the way, anybody that's been here on here for a while, can you let me know, has the signal been okay today? Uh, oh, oh my gosh, Robin just said, congratulations on the new modem. It was clear and steady the whole time. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to know, um, if, if this was a good signal today. And I think I'm hoping that the new modem, whew, I hope that it um, has ended the issues. Okay, so there is Parakeet Party. I think that is stunning just because that's one of my most favorite colors. <laughs> but let's add a little bit of Granny Apple for some extra shading. Mainly because... Here's Granny Apple. Mainly because we have all this amazing dark and light shading in the flowers, but then we sort of have this kind of just flat looking leaf. So I'm thinking by adding a little bit of Granny Apple, it will really give it that shading that I think it should have. So we'll just kind of do it on part of the leaf so that we have dark and light. And let's, let's check. Yeah, look at that difference. Look at that. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so pretty. This card is going to be gorgeous. I can't wait to make this into an actual card. And without sticking my head right under the camera, I'm hoping I have this lined up well. So forgive me it's, if it's a tiny bit off, but I think, I think it's good. Yep. Look at that. Look at the difference. Oh, so pretty. We have that. Yeah, I think I've got that lined up. So this was Parakeet and Granny Apple. They are a great pair if you are looking for two colors to shade with. Yay! Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. I am so glad. Who asked that? Thank you for asking for me to do that. <laughs> yes, Cindy, this is a Stampin' Up! stencil. It is in the holiday catalog. It's called Abundant Beauty. You'll find it on page 47 and 77. There is the number. So available to customers on September 6th. But we're done. So you might want to uh, watch the replay, Cindy. Good signal, everybody. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I was going to tell you the story and then I forgot. So um, we couldn't figure out what was wrong with why our Wi-Fi kept, or our signal kept going out, not just the Wi-Fi, but our whole internet signal. And so finally I said, you know, I think it's the modem because the modem just keeps resetting like 20 times a day. It just kept resetting itself. So on Saturday, we went to the Comcast store. We took in our modem <laughs> and this very, very, very nice gentleman helped us. And he was very politely trying to say that this was pretty much an antique piece of equipment. And no wonder we didn't have a signal because it was basically like throttling the signal. So you had all the information coming in and then it was going into this old piece of equipment to try to send it back out into our house to, you know, to the computers and the iPads and everything. And he's like, yeah, we need to give you a new modem. <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. We hooked that all up. We finally got all the Wi-Fi, all the passwords, all the um, A-L-E-X-A-I-A, -A, however you spell it. I don't want to say it out loud because she'll answer me. But, you know, all those things that are in the house. We got those all reset, all connected to the new Wi-Fi. Oh, my goodness. Technology frightens me sometimes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I am so glad. Thank you, Glenda. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So, 
any, did you, can you see this? Is it close enough? I mean, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I cannot wait to finish up those other ones and make cards out of these. It's so pretty. So any questions about what we talked about today, I'm happy to answer if you have questions about this. Otherwise, my goodness, we've been here over an hour. It feels like 10 minutes. I don't know how this hour can go so fast every week, but my tummy's growling. I want lunch. I have to go to the post office with all the catalogs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Cindy, you probably missed the beginning. I have 400 holiday catalogs in my car. They are going out to all my regular customers today. I spent most of the weekend prepping all those, stickers on them, stuffing them in catalogs, printing postage, printing all the labels, all the things. So they will go to the post office today to all of my customers who order regularly from me. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Thank you, Rosie. I didn't know you were on here. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks, Wendy. Oh, Glenda, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Okay. Um, yes, Pat, thank you. She loves the two-tone. I do, too. I And this one is Boho Blue and Misty Moonlight. When I finish and make a card out of this, I'll put all of these co color combinations on my blog. And this one was Freesia, Grape, and Heather. And then, of course, we talked about the bubble bath and berry burst on here. I think the greens on this one, I'll probably go like olive and maybe mossy meadow, go a little bit darker into that uh, yellow. I don't know. We'll see. I think that'll look good. This one, which greens am I going to do? I kind of think, don't you think the same green, the same bright, nice bright green with that? I think I'll do the same on this. I think so. Oh, thank you, Tammy. She loves the blues. Yep. Uh, Tammy, your birthday card is going to be made out of this. Just, you know, so it's not going to be a huge surprise, but I'm glad you like it. I'm going to make your birthday card out of this one. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Yes, the time goes fast because we're having fun, Patty. I'm glad you're having fun. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for hanging out with me. And thank you for crossing your fingers that the signal stayed strong. I'm so happy that it seems to be working, and I will see you this coming Friday. I think we're doing a fun fold. I have a little pile of cards over here that I'm working on that I think will be our Friday card. So thank you again, and I appreciate you watching. I will see you Friday, and if you're looking for more info, just check pattystamps.com. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.